All right, I've been putting this off because I freaking hate interiors. Gosh, I hate doing it so much. But this interior in my 992 Touring is really, 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 really nice. And you're gonna think I'm nuts. I guess maybe you guys won't, but people would. Brand new car, brand new paint, needs polished. Brand new car, brand new leather, needs cleaned. There's lots of hands that touch the thing. Um, there's also, with this car, uh, I had like the windows closed and the car kind of sat here while the interior is, is evaporating or off-gassing. Uh, so all the glues, all the dyes, all the spunk, you could see it on the windshield. Even still, I just cleaned the windshield and I'm gonna clean it one more time. Uh, normally when you're driving your car around, you have the air conditioning running, stuff like that. This car and its initial sort of off-gassing is just sitting here so we can actually physically see it. Uh, and so the leather, I'll show you in a second here, I cleaned some of the dash and stuff already, uh, but the leather has all kinds of funk on it. And so before I put my, my leather shield or before I put my, my protecting product on here, uh, I need, need to clean the interior even though it's brand new. So I'm gonna take the seat out because I can't get to the back. Um, there's no way to get even like Trevor. I try to get someone small and nimble. They can't get back there And so I'm gonna take I'm disconnect the battery take the passenger seat out That'll also make it a little easier for me to show you some of this stuff I've shown you this stuff a bunch, but it's cooler when you do it on a Cohiba I'm gonna install uh, my friend Ed uh, make made me some custom uh, Cohiba from Edgar. So we're gonna install these uh, so I normally don't like protectors, but you don't really have much of a choice with this unless you want to wear a hole through your darn leather getting in and out of this. There's not really way, any way around it. Uh, and so this is the safe way um, to, to do this. And he makes the best, uh, best quality. I mean, this is actual Porsche Cohiba leather. Uh, so I've already treated this with leather shield, uh, but this is the best way to do it. Uh, and so um, we'll jump right in. Uh, I've already kind of cheated a little bit here and then I cleaned, I was sitting in here um, cleaning the dash and cleaning um, some of the leather up. But let's finish the dash together and then we'll take the seat out and, uh, and go from there. Actually, let's take the seat out first to get this out of the way. If you're gonna take the seat out because we don't want the car to um, wake up and, um, and then end up with some sort of airbag light, I always disconnect the battery before I take the seat out of the car. I've learned that lesson before. Then you end up with an airbag light, and airbag lights you usually can't reset with something with a simple, uh, simple tool. You have to go use the darn P-Wiz to get it, get it um, reset. This is probably not smart, but I'm taking the seat out here. You know, come to think of it, I kind of wanted to do this all at once, but I've got. Uh, oh, I don't think we've shown. Have we shown anybody this yet? I don't think we have. This, uh, this little bro is, uh, yeah, is freaking awesome. So check this. Focal limited edition. I thought they were only making 60. No, the model number's P60. They're making 911 of them. So I don't feel as, as uh, special. I hate Focal, which is <laughs> a terrible move. Uh, but I hate Bose a lot more. I don't hate Focal. I just, Focal is a very, very bright, very clear, very crisp sound. Uh, and the mid-range is fine. It's the, it's the Beryllium tweeter uh, that hopefully through the, uh, the Helix DSP amp that I bought from um, uh, Matt Schaefer, um, I'm hoping that um, when I set this thing up that It'll, uh, I can tune out some of the brightness, knock down the three, three maybe f I'll probably knock down like four, 4K up, uh, 4,000 kilohertz up, knock the, you know, knock it down, you know, 6 dB or so. Um, but the cool thing about this, the reason why I wanted this is this is a direct swap replacement. And so it has Porsche plugs. So the tweeters, the woofers, the center channel woofer, um, all of these parts and pieces that has the trim ring to exactly match and fit right into the factory location. Uh, so I can take the bow stuff out. I mean, naturally the thing to do would be to send this thing off and tear it all apart and do some crazy stereo. I don't want that. I just want, I want to try to not you know, tear this car apart if I can help it all. I'm about to take the freaking seat out. Uh, and so this puppy uh, is going in and you could just do this with the factory amplifier, the factory Bose amp. Um, but I said to Matt, Matt, can you make me some sort of like plug and play harness? 
uh, so we can go fiber optic out. There's a, um, I can't remember what he said the brand was, but there's a, uh, there's an interface, the off fiber optic interface, and that interface then feeds the amplifier. And then I think he's found some sort of uh, plug connection where I can plug into the factory, like all of the, the power, power ground, speaker wires, all of that. I can plug into that and then direct Molex plug without having to cut anything and resolder. Uh, and so I'm hoping we can do something simple like that. All right, so these should be external torques normally. So we got the battery disconnected. It's usually like an E10 or E12. Let's see what we got here. And these seats are so light that it is really easy to take them out. Yeah, it's gonna be E12, like normal. Can you, uh, can you see this on the dash? Maybe um, come from, from this angle. So I cleaned up to here. And so you can see this part wasn't cleaned. So I cleaned all the dash leading up to it. And so there's like a film, like a funky film over top of the uh, leather that uh, it'd just be nice to remove prior to, uh, prior to really spending any time in the car. The car's getting sent down to Tampa on um, Wednesday next week. Mike's gonna take it down to Ryan and they're gonna do the uh, PPF. So we're PPFing the entire car and I'm gonna have them tint with a 70% all around. So we're gonna stay semi fishbowl, but I am in Florida and I'd feel a lot better if we, uh... why am I doing it like this? Am I stupid or something? I feel a lot better keeping the heat and UV out of the car. So again, the reason I'm taking the seat out is I can't get to the back window and it's got a film on it. So that means the seat's gonna have to come out again when the window tinters to it. But it's so simple, you'll see. As long as you take your time, we can get this seat out of here without any damage. It's not like, uh, that is the cool thing about Porsche is you can take them apart and put them back together. And generally speaking, do so with little to no effect. So after this interior cleaning, after the stereo, I'll do the radar detector at the same time. Then theoretically, I'll do the, do the exhaust. I'm done messing with this thing and then I'm just gonna have it. <laughs> I say that now, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. the snap on truck today and then I get him to come out and I'm gonna buy a toolbox I think I am I'm gonna finance it too it's gonna to be like 30% interest I want to see how this game is played so according to the website a 84 inch epic just base is $23,000 <laughs> I'm not paying that. If it's twenty-three thousand, I'm out. But if it, if it, you know, so it's probably twenty-three that they'll sell for thirteen. We'll see how much how much uh, we're talking here, and then I'm gonna finance it and show people you freaking idiots, don't do that. And I was right. I started watching some videos, like the drawers wobble out, and there's spot welds all over the exterior. It's you know, it's got the American jank that. I'm talking about. I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. Once we get the head out, try not to blow out your back. Piece of cake. It's the first time you ever have a set of Goodyear tires in my garage. Joe's. So we'll just put this up here. This is a nice little stand for this job. Like this. Boom. Okay. We're safe. 
so I can get in here nicely now. And so with cleaning leather, put this is strong cleaner. There's mild and strong cleaner, neither of which are particularly aggressive. So you can feel comfortable using either. And then this is a very specific brush. It won't scratch the leather, but it's what you need to do proper cleaning. So clean first, condition second. And we're not looking to coat things with leather. I've said this a million times. You want to condition the leather so that way the leather the leather is still breathable. But what we're doing with Leather Shield, Leather Shield is designed to allow for, um, it's kind of like, kind of like it becomes the sacrificial layer where, not kind of, it does become the sacrificial layer that you can then, um, it'll help with dye transfer and stuff like that, help eliminate that. I think this is leather too, geez. So again, there's not real dirt here. It's mainly just uh, like just greasy residue from the off-gassing. Gosh, there's so much leather in this thing, it's insane. There's way more leather than I thought. It makes, it made more sense why the why well, the exclusive manufacturer option costs so much. There's a whole lot of, even this is leather here. This is one of those things where like, if you plan to have the car and you're like, well, you know, spending a ridiculous amount of money on a uh, leather upgrade seems kind of stupid. You wouldn't do that on a average purchase, but if you're gonna have something for a really long time, Maybe it might, it might make sense to some people. I did that on my Carrera S, or I bought the X51 package, and of course that backfired on me because it added virtually no extra value. And I had that car for six months. So this front area is ready for shield. I did all this, did this, this rear section here. Let me wipe this down. Well, while I got my rear end back here, I might as well stay back here and finish this part. There's like a certain additional character you get out of the leather when it's cleaned and treated properly. Not, not dressed. Like, I don't want it shiny or you know, feel like there's something on there. We want it to just feel natural. And that's the hard part. So this has like a funk on it though know, that we're gonna defunk here. You just need enough product to make sure you're getting the whole area covered. And then depending on your level of filth, you know, a lot of this, that I'm doing is kind of, some of it is getting the product on here so that I can wipe it off. So the wipe off is gonna do almost more than my agitation here at, at this, st this stage of the leather. But if you have a lot of dirt, you're gonna want to uh, really agitate it, maybe do several several iterations. So this, this we would classify as the, the new car cleaning. I've been dreading doing this. I've literally planned to do this for like two months. <laughs> I hate doing this so much. Gosh, so much. The last three weekends I was here and just literally didn't do it. This area back here, when I get the leather shield on it, will probably never get treated ever again by me. So this is a one and done deal. Okay. This is terrible. This is gonna be my new goal. We're gonna have a uh, interior specialist personality on Obsessed Garage. 
where I'm no longer going to do this ever again. Alright, this is it. Just, just get through it, Matt. Just get through it. Please. This is it. Last part. Fifty percent of the reason why I took the seat out, so I can clean it on the bench and not have to freaking crawl around in here. The other thing you would be doing if your interior is dirtier is you would be uh, you need like a bucket with water so you can clean your brush out. Again, most of my cleaning is being done here by uh, the wipe off part. The only good part about this is I'm gonna feel really good when this is done. So normally if I was cleaning, I would do like circular motion. Get the product on so you're not dry scrubbing. Manage, manage your um, stitching, but you can go over the stitching generally. And then, like I said, the wipe off part right now is the key. That's why shield towels. This is my. Because I'm looking to get all the residue, the glues and dyes and all that stuff off the surface, just the surface level funk. There's no like embedded oils and stuff from, you know, body oils and things on it. So, right now is more about just getting that funk off. Yeah. So, you know, you don't see like a, a giant difference, but there is a cleanliness to it that you didn't have before I did this. Good news is if someday I can't drive ever again, at least I can piddle around with the cars like this all day. job security. Even if I can't drive them, I can always still clean them. That would mean I'd have to start cleaning other people's cars if mine aren't very dirty. I always have a backup plan. Matt Mormon Professional Detailing Services at your, at your, uh, at your beck and call ready. Clearly interiors would not be my specialty. And somebody maybe give me a suggestion. What's a good suggestion of a way to, like I wanna get the sudsy stuff on the surface before, you know, the, before I do the, the uh, brushing. Maybe it's just, maybe I need a, well I could probably answer my own question. I should probably just put it on with a sponge first and then agitate. Let's try that. I think this might work better. Try this. See what I'm saying? Then I have some. It's already kind of wet and ready to go. So the other nice thing about taking this out of the car, it's gonna make my Edgard install not that the Edgard install is hard, but it's going to make it a little even easier. Maybe a bit more precise. Let's not drop this down into the tire. Some pretty leather, that's for sure. I get a, uh, I have this like, just let me get this done feeling. I, I don't have that with polishing as much. Maybe toward the very end of the project, but like. Interiors are not for me, not my thing. One could argue though, you spend a lot more time in the interior than you do looking at the exterior. So I think I'd be a bit more about it.
can't be good at everything. But the best thing I'm best at is mouth breathing on camera. That's my, uh, that's my new, new MO. I'm gonna start breathing on how to, I've been working on learning how to breathe out of my nose. It's hard though, because I talk, you know, I have to talk and narrate through the video. Maybe we should just start, like if we took the mic off and put it down here, we wouldn't have that problem, but it's kind of my signature move. They're like, why are you so out of shape? I'm like, that's gonna be my 2023 improvement resolution. Is that better? Very subtle, but it looks different. Maybe it's placebo, I just feel clean, feel like it's cleaner. So now, let's install our Edgar off the car. And that'll also help me. I always have to remind myself how to do this. This will be my one, two, no, I didn't have one on that car. So one, two, three, four, fourth or fifth set that I've installed. But you know, it's like every couple of years, I gotta remind myself how to do it. Gosh, that's a pretty seat. I don't love the race techs. I wish it was Alcantara. And of course we could always get that, but you got a piece of Velcro Got a couple of zip ties that we're gonna need to, to zip tie the Velcro on. It'll make sense once we once we get this in position. And then we have this this piece. So it's only one of these, but I don't know which one it is. So let's set that here. And we have to we have to pull this, pop this out, so we can get this through. And so that's where the skin wedge tool comes in handy. You don't need to take it all the way out. Just pop it. It'll just pop out, just like that. So it doesn't need to come fully just to there and then this is what's going to come through and then velcro i think uh, we'll figure out where it goes but i think we end up putting the velcro somewhere around here and these have these little cards that will slide up under here i don't want to break it I really do want to get this tab off of there, but it's probably better to put the top in first. Okay, see that? Nice and easy. So this will come down. These tabs will go under. And we're gonna pull against those tabs this way. A good guideline is to look at where the stitching is here. Don't push that in yet until we get into position here. You have to not be a sissy here. You have to kind of pull it, stretch it, massage it, get it into place. And if you do it right, look how good that looks. It looks like it's factory. Ed will be really proud of me. I didn't even read the instructions, Ed. I don't know where the instructions are, so I'm sure he has them on his website somewhere. But then this comes down through and it will pull everything nice and tight. Look at that, that's good, man. Then I got this guy. It's a two piece design. Let me just see which one it is. Is it this one? No. Is it this way? No. I think it's. Yeah, I think this is it. your stitching here I 
This stitching's a little darker at the moment because it just got wet. So that piece will look like that. Then this thing comes down under here, I think. Let's see if I remember correctly, how do we do this? I don't think it comes up. I think he has us doing it through. And then I think we come back to here. So what we'll do, make sure we're straight, we'll come around and that'll pull nice and tight. And then we'll, we'll strap that around our Velcro. So our Velcro piece is here. So this, because it's rounded, will pop off over time. So that's why he gives you a couple of zip ties to keep this in position. Make sure it doesn't come off. And then you shouldn't have to mess with it again. You can snip it. Let me cut some of it off. It'll be fine to just let it, let the excess hang. So let's see how we look. What do you guys think? I think I need to, I think I need to pull it back a little bit more because I think that this should go right here. So I'm gonna try to massage it a little bit here. Pushed it in cockeyed there, so there we go. That's Velcro in position. Okay, let's pull this down. And I moved it zero, <laughs> so <laughs> I could have left well enough alone. I think I got this on backwards, don't I? if I got the right one. Yeah, I definitely had that wrong one on there. It wasn't the right shape. Yeah, everything here looks good. Okay, that's it. You just have to work with it a little bit to get it contoured the way you want. I like it. Cool. So I think that's all I really need to share with you. So I'm gonna do the same thing the other side. I'm not gonna take the seat out. Um, I've already cleaned the seat. I just have to leather shield it. So I'm gonna leather shield it, clean the glass, and we're ready to uh, send this thing off to PPF and tint. And the next step will be um, just use it. Not exhaust, but just use the thing. I haven't put the darn blade on the thing yet. So anyway, if do yourself a favor, if you have a GT car, or you have any kind of nice car with leather in it, just go to obsessedcarage.com, get color lock leather shield. If you're gonna buy only two products, buy leather shield with some sponges, do strong cleaner with a brush, get some blue towels and do yourself a favor and dial in your interior. It's the best. I've been trying all this leather care stuff forever. This is a company that does leather care. It's what they do. They do you know, it's come from the um, um, from the furniture world into into cars. So Lars and the team at ColorLock, they're based out of Germany. Um, they might, I think they make the best stuff on the planet. And it's super like like it's it's not like it doesn't feel like real toxic like on my hands. So if it's not like tearing up my hands, it's not going to tear up the leather. So anyway, thanks to Ed for uh, making me some uh, custom Ed guards. I think I, yeah, okay. <laughs> so thanks to Ed for making me some Ed guards and um, I will see you on the next video. It won't be interiors, we'll do something else. See you soon.